Lyle Tinsley Isola. Hiring day in the NFL. Colts and Cardinals both raiding the Eagles. What it means for Indy, Arizona, and Philadelphia. And what everybody's saying about the new MLB rules. Oh, yeah. Bleep show. Ear muffs. Oh, yeah. Face muffs. Let's go. <laughs> that was that call at the end of the Super Bowl. That was the right call. Can you make the games be exciting a little bit? It was. NFL news of the day will start with Indianapolis hiring Eagles offensive coordinator Shane Steichen. Hot off the Super Bowl appearance, number three offense in the league, his first head coaching job at 37. For Indy, it was five weeks of open search and 14 candidates. They select Steichen. Frank Isola, around the horn of you. How do you see the Steichen hire for India? Well, if we connect the dots here, he was an offensive coordinator. His quarterback was young, who obviously played like an MVP this season before he got hurt, made it to the Super Bowl. Indianapolis needs a young coach, and it looks like they're going to draft a young quarterback, maybe a quarterback with Alabama ties and Bryce Young. So I think that had a lot to do with it. A lot of times these jobs are timing. The timing was right right Justin here. Justin Tinsley. Look, you're always going to wonder about Eric B. Enemy in situations like this, but honestly, I understand this hire. In 2020 with the Chargers, Steichen's offense uh, ranked sixth in passing yards. His, his first year in Philly, they were first in rushing yards, and obviously they were a top three offense this year. So I get it. And that offense put up 35 points in the Super Bowl. And when you put up 35 points in the Super Bowl, you expect to win. Uh, so when you're Indian, you're, you're bottom five in points per game, turnovers and sacks allowed, you look at this guy – to, to change the direction of your franchise. And you, you desperately need that right now. It's a blank slate, but it's also a lot of work to do. And in this draft, here's how important this draft is for Steichen. The Colts haven't been in this dire need of a quarterback since 2012 when they got Andrew Luck. And before that, it was Peyton Manning in 1998. So they have to get this right. This is a franchise that has had eight different starting quarterbacks in the last five years. So it's a lot of work cut out. Harry Lyles Jr. But, okay, so Philadelphia fans at least got to scratch their head at least once on this one, right? Because we are talking about one of the great offensive coordinators from this game, but it wasn't the one that won, won the game. You mean, you mean it Indianapolis wasn't the one. fans? Okay, yeah. Indianapolis fans, yeah. Either way. Uh, but the other offensive coordinator who's the offense scored – a touchdown on every single possession in the second half that they saw except for the game-winning field goal against a defense led by a coordinator who also just got hired because that defense was that good. Either way, it is a good hire, but to me, I think the most important thing with this is that Indianapolis is not about to do this plug-and-play thing at quarterback. You've got the number four pick. You've got three guys at the top of this draft who you look at and you say, this guy can be formed into a great NFL quarterback, and so because of that, you should feel comfortable with this if you are a Colts fan. And Clinton Yates, Indy going offense with Shane Steichen. We talk about this all the time. The worst coach position in the league is quarterback. When you find somebody that can actually do it, you hand him the keys to the car and you move on with it. But if I'm Steichen, I'm sorry, my man, this is a bad job in the league. I know there's only 32 of them, and I get it. But if you're looking at a generational talent in the bush versus one in hand, and you're talking about the Alabama guy when you were there with the Alabama guy in the Super Bowl, moving on to somebody who picked somebody off of TV to be their head coach prior – not sure that that's a move I would make, but good luck. Wait, wait. So you would have stayed offensive coordinator with Philadelphia, then moved to a head coaching job in the NFL. That's a I mean, I'm just saying that if you're in the business of, of you know, producing quarterbacks who are good at what you do, you've got one right, right there. Right, guys, Soli, you want to respond to that? Yeah. If, 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 you're, if you're Sean Payton, you could do that. Come on. You said it. There's only 32 of these jobs. One becomes available. Remember, too, talk about a clean slate. You're going to a job that's a terrible team, and you're getting a young quarterback, which is exactly what you did in Philly. And I, let's face it, other things have to be in play, including a defense, but it's a good place to start. I think the expectations are right in line with the young quarterback and a young coach. Indy goes offense. The Arizona Cardinals go defense. And once again, raiding the Philadelphia Eagles right off that Super Bowl. Jonathan Gannon, defensive coordinator Philly, finalizing a contract with Arizona. His first head coaching job at age 40. Harry, how do you like the Gannon hire for the Cardinals? Looks like another job that wouldn't have been terrible for Eric Bannemi, but I do like this hire. Look, this defense was incredible that he just led. What they've done the last two years was nothing short of impressive. Uh, but to me, I like this because, one, this team has 31 unrestricted free agents. So you are basically walking into a clean slate here. 
which you would like to see as a young head coach. To me, though, the most important thing that the Cardinals are going to do moving forward here is not necessarily this hire. It's all the ones after this. Who's going to be your offensive coordinator? Who's going to be your quarterback's coach? All the guys that you put around Kyler Murray, to me, is what is going to make this either a good or a bad hire. Right now, they're in the right direction, in my opinion. Linton Yates, I'll, I'll ask it to you this way. With all the questions at, around the quarterback position in Kyler Murray, they went with a defensive-minded guy. What do you think of the Gannon hire for Arizona? I mean, Harry, if I may say, I don't think that everything you described qualifies as a clean slate. The whole issue is the guy playing quarterback and how you're going to be able to deal with him as a leader in terms of your team. And I think that's why it makes sense that they went defensively. You're kind of avoiding that a little bit, but that might actually be the smart move. And so overall, for a team that's been, for lack of a better term, wandering in the desert, I understand why you go on the defensive side of the ball because the previous time you tried it on the offensive side, it didn't work out. So. Right, guys, Sola. Yeah, this team's a mess. They lost their uh, last seven games. Their defense isn't good. But for him, you're the new head coach there. you got to go on the offensive. The first thing you do, you call up the quarterback. You find out where Kyler Murray is mentally as well as physically. And you better bring somebody in, whether it's co quarterback coach, offense coordinator, that has to work with him. Because the biggest issue on this team, dating back to that playoff loss that they had against the Rams, is Kyler Murray. He blamed everybody but himself after that game. We had one of the worst interceptions you'll ever see at the end of a half in a playoff game. It begins and ends with the quarterback. And Justin Tinsley on Gannon, defensive hire going to Arizona. And honestly, a defensive mindset for this team isn't the worst thing in the world. We saw what just happened if Cliff Kingsbury's last season there. The last time the Cardinals have finished top 10 in, in terms of points per game allowed in a season was 2015. That was the last time they won a postseason game. So they're bringing in the defensive mind who... Who, to Harry's credit, hopefully he, he continues to fill the team out in posi positions that can actually move this team forward. But honestly, a defensive-minded coach for Kyler Murray might actually be the best thing for him. He can teach him about the other side of the ball and what to look, you know, look for and uh, situations to expect. So I'm not, t I'm not totally mad at the hire, and they, they needed a fresh start down in Arizona, and you go get a guy who led a top-10 defense in the league. Both coordinators off a team that just made the Super Bowl. You would think that's commonplace. You lose coordinators because your team was so good. You made the Super Bowl. In this case, they lost the Super Bowl. It doesn't happen. It's been two decades since the Super Bowl contender lost both coordinators. And now Philadelphia goes into the offseason with, well, they've got 20 free agents. Every team's got about 20, but some of those are big names. What position are the Eagles now in, having to find two coordinators and, and try to get back to the Super Bowl? Clinton Yates around the horn of you. I would say a bad position. Let's not forget what happened the last time the Eagles made the Super Bowl. They lost their entire offensive brain trust and couldn't figure anything out until, hello, this coaching group came in. And so while it's an understandable circumstance and you're happy that it happened, I would not envy any Eagles fans right now in terms of continuity in this offense or defense. Wow, that's pessimistic. That's a, that's a dark view of the Eagles right now. Frank Isola, <laughs> are you as, as dim as Yates is? Yeah. Yeah, what was it, two, three weeks ago, we, told that we, were, we heard that anybody could coach the Eagles. The operation basically runs itself. <laughs> yes, coaching is important. But they do have, let's remember, they got a good front office, and they have the number 10 overall pick in the draft. So they'll figure out a way to still make it Justin work. Justin Sinsley? Yeah, Philly was one of the more stable teams all season. Now it feels like there's a lot of instability around them. Of course, Hurts' contract, you mentioned the free agents. But losing the philosophies on both sides of the ball, that is pretty detrimental. It's already hard enough to get to the Super Bowl, let alone get back. So if I'm an Eagles fan, you know, you feel good about that front office, as Frank said, the moves they can make. But you don't feel as great as you did a couple of weeks wow. ago because there's a lot of instability. And Harry Lyles, are you as, again, pessimistic as Yates and Tinsley are? Uh, somewhat, but it's less about the coordinators, it's more, and it's more about what you mentioned at the top. It's the talent. You're talking about guys like Miles Sanders, Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, and, and others that you're going to have to worry about re-signing key pieces of a team that, mind you, was one of the best, if not the best, top to bottom on both sides of the football. So to me, that's where, where their worry has to be. And then also, the 49ers are not going to be playing a fourth-string quarterback again in the NFC Championship game, and you have to worry about what the Cowboys are going to do this offseason. Mm -hmm. There's one more story here. Now with the hiring complete in the NFL roster of coaches, the news and reporting from Kansas City and the feeling on Eric Bieniemy that he could leave Kansas City and move on. This came from Adam Tyker in a piece for ESPN. Andy Reid says he wants him to run a show somewhere, be a head coach, but that's now not a possibility in the NFL. The NFL interest reportedly is in OC positions for Bieniemy. If he were to leave, Washington was one. Baltimore was another, though. They made a hire today of Georgia offensive coordinator Todd Munkin to make the move back up to the NFL to be the OC for the Ravens. 
So my question is, Justin, does it make sense for the enemy to move on and get away from Kansas City for an OC position, as has been suggested by some, or to stay with Kansas City? In the past two decades, no one's interviewed for a head coaching job more than Eric Bieniemy. He's interviewed for 14 different, 14 different teams. So, like, I understand the need to want to move on and prove yourself, but I think he's in the best possible situation with Kansas City. If Andy, if Andy Reid stays two more years and then hands the keys to the vehicle over to Bieniemy, he gets a 29-year-old uh, Patrick Mahomes. I think that's better than any situation out there. But obviously, the the larger conversation is, you know, black head coaches and this this glass ceiling, this inability to break through and receive opportunities th that we see others get. Frank Gaisola? Yeah, that's, I mean, he has interviewed 14 times, like you've mentioned. A lot of guys have been hired during that period, and the guy has coached the best player in the sport. So I have no idea what's going on. Does Andy Reid want him to move on thinking, you know what, when I do leave, we're thinking about hiring somebody else. I have no idea. But I will say this. I think around the league, this would be my guess, that they look at him and think it's more of a Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid thing. So maybe in the long run, he's a victim of his own success, and the best thing would be to move on to a different team. Harry, I'll turn to you. Were you surprised to read that lead sentence in the ESPN piece today, that this could be the end of the enemy in Kansas City just because it might be time to move elsewhere when there are no head coaching jobs available now? Uh, yes, I do think that is surprising. But what is unsurprising is Andy Reid was very – very specific with his wording in that he said the needed to be a lead man because there is no other circumstance under which you would see a coach that led an offense that was at worst top five the last five years and was number one three of those five years and we would expect them to make a lateral move and so to me I don't think he's going to go anywhere because again that is just not something that we would ask any other coach to do in those circumstances. Lynn Yates. What's so upsetting about this entire situation is the shifting goalpost element about what it feels like it takes to get a job as a black coach in this league. You know, you talk about whether or not people like him, whether or not there's things in his past, then it's okay, well, does he have the experience? Well, I mean, you would think that after all this time and all this success, the enemy would have crossed all of those things off the list, but no, you still got teams like, I don't know, the Panthers or the Giants who are going to hire, or, I don't know, the two teams prior to that we discussed in this segment who are just going to hire guys effectively off the street in the NFL. So, yeah. You can think about it in terms of the enemy and the Chiefs, but the larger discussion is still infuriating as a black person in America looking at what it takes to get a job at the top flight in your league. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your thoughts on this. That's the NFL coaching situation now coming to basically a close for the 2023 offseason. Take a break. Buy or sell on the other side. For Mavericks 121. Dallas 0-2 with Doncic and Irving on the court at the same time. The wonder about their defense bearing out immediately. Dallas was down 26 in the third quarter. Irving was magic late. 26 of his 36 in the four. Huge high energy comeback, but not enough because they couldn't get the last shot off. Frank Isola, what's your takeaway so far from what you've seen with Luka and Kyrie? Well, you just saw all you need to know. Luka Doncic passed the ball twice with under 11 seconds to go. That doesn't happen unless he's thinking, man, people wonder whether or not I'm a good teammate. Kyrie Irving trying to get the ball back to him. They are the first two teammates to ever score 30 more points together in two consecutive games. And guess what? Dallas lost both of those games. Mm, Tinsley, good stat, Frank. Look, they're going to they're gonna be fun to watch. Offensively, we all knew this. But here's the wrinkle. They don't have a lot of time to figure this out. After the All-Star break, you maybe have 20, 21, 22 games left. And in the West, if you drop a couple of games, that's the difference between hosting a playoff series and being in the play-in game. So they, they got to figure it out and figure it out. Really cool. Ira Lyles Jr. Tony, I'm just buying that this, this circumstance that we just saw under which they both had to get the last shot off or had to decide mm -hmm, yeah. to get the last shot off was perfect. A little version of them on their shoulder like, hey, you've got to pass this because you're the ball <laughs> hog, right? So you can't have that narrative hit. So uh -oh, uh -oh. to me, look, I think it'll work out. And, uh, you know, I definitely didn't just say that. But I do think, look, if Kyrie Irving scores 26 in a fourth quarter, the best of his career like he did last night, I know he wants the media to talk about everything. Or I'm sorry, just talk about basketball and not everything else that'll work Clint Yates who are we kidding I'm selling all of this our question on this program was who's gonna take the last shot when this <laughs> team is in a but tough situation they still can't figure uh, that out I don't care philosophically you're owing two together the numbers matter this is a problem Jason Kidd figure it out with your team buy or sell to quote bleep show Jason Stark of the athletic riding MLB is throwing all the rule changes at players and teams 
at the start of spring training, immediately expecting and hoping for a tough adjustment for players and team. That's what they want. They want a bleep show. So they get it over with as soon as possible. Teams have used that phrase. League commissioner's office have used that phrase. So the changes, you know, the, no more shift past second base for infielders. Pitch clock It's going to be 15 seconds. They're going to limit the number of pickoffs, the bigger bases. Buy or sell, bleep show. Clinton Yates. Massive buy if the entire complaint of everything is that it's been chicken bleep. When somebody shows up with chicken salad, you better eat it and it's going to taste good, okay? These rule changes are what we are looking for in terms of anything to talk about beyond the basics. Trust me, as somebody that sits through baseball games and cares about every single part of it, and we're now talking about throwovers on Valentine's Day in February, okay, okay. this is exciting. But the idea kiddos, that it's going to be bad in spring training and they'll get it out of their system, you know, the break break a few eggs to make an omelet and then you you believe that Yes, but that sounds like coaches that are too lazy to do their jobs. If players are trained to not break the rules, which is what they do, they will get better. That's why they're Harry Lyle Jr. buy or sell bleep show. I'm buying the bleep show as long as we get the bleep show. Look, we've been playing baseball basically as long as the light bulb has since like been around, okay? So like, you're gonna try to tell me that we're just gonna get all these wrinkles out during spring training. We are going to get monumental meltdowns during the regular season. And that is what I am looking forward to the most. I'm sure these changes are for the betterment of the game, but I am looking forward to the meltdowns. Tinsley? Look, I'm gonna give credit to Jason Stark. That's how you write a season preview piece. The standard bearer <laughs> has been set. It managed Lead to do the, the impossible. Bleep show? It yeah, made yeah, yeah. you care about preseason. We don't care about preseason basketball. We don't care about preseason football. But suddenly, I want to see the bleep show that is gonna be spring training. So shout out to Jason Stark. Frank, is this too much made out of nothing, or is not enough made out of something? Yeah, and Jason Stark is a legend. He's like the ultimate seam head. You know what? It's an S show. It's a spring show. That's the time of year. Pitches and catches report. They go over the rules. Let's hope it's a disaster. They have six weeks to figure it out. The players aren't complete knuckleheads. They'll catch on. The rules will catch on. Everything will work Clint, out. what specifically is going to be the hardest thing? It's going to be the pitch clock? to get around the 15 seconds, whether it's in, in, in the It's, it's going to be the throwovers. If a guy's just stepping off, forgetting the amount of times he can do that, next thing you know, that turns into something else. That's going to be the main issue. People are probably going to say, stop booing in. This happens in the yeah, world That could be a lot of box. If you like box, okay, yeah. come to the right place. MLB, the bleep show. That's the new game we're, we're coming <laughs> up with. Harry Lyles Jr., thanks for your time. Justin Sinsley. Yates Isola, showdown next. Isola, good luck in the showdown. The latest on Zion Williamson hamstring setback while ramping up, and it will be more weeks away. Pelicans David Griffin described Zion as not taking the news well because he was so diligent in his rehab. Pelicans were one seed in December. They fell to the 11 with Zion out. Right now they're the 7. Frank, where are the Pelicans today? They're in big trouble. You know, on opening night, I was right there in Brooklyn watching him play, and he's terrific. There's so much to like about him, but he's in his fourth season. He's only played 114 games. Unfortunately, and I hope I'm wrong, I think he just meet one of those guys that's always hurt. Yikes. In his first four seasons, he's missed 170 games. In Joel Embiid's first four seasons, he missed 234. It can work out as long as you have patience. I think they'll be okay. So you're slightly more optimistic, and the Embiid information is, is good. Frank being at a game that Zion played at is just your job, Frank. Thank you. Thank you for doing your job. You're not getting a point for there. it. We'll move on. Kentucky versus Texas. Check this out. Are you aware college sports has a drop-dead time rule for softball? Because if travel's involved and a team has a tight travel window, a game will end at a specific time when it's agreed upon. And for Texas and Kentucky, it was 3.30 p.m. this week. Game going to the previous complete inning. Let's take out the video here because in this game, seventh inning is tied. So the top of the eighth in extra innings started at 3.10. Kentucky scored three runs in the top of the eighth. And that's when seemingly Texas came up with about a half a dozen separate ways to think about what they were doing here, some might call it a delay of the game. Multiple trips to the mound by the Texas manager. A minute-long defensive meeting for Texas. When they got to the bottom of the eighth down three runs, it started at 322. Multiple pinch runner changes for Texas. A batter needing eye drops in the middle of it at bat. And then it did get to 330, drop dead. 
before Kentucky could get the final outs. Game was ruled a tie. What just happened here? Do you smell something sinister, Clinton, or a fair rule for a tie game? It's a bad rule, but I understand why it happens. These girls are under so much stress to play so many sports. But Texas, this is Bush League of the highest order. We're talking about a sport that is designed to be fast, quick, and Wait move quickly. Whoa, That's whoa, the whoa, whole whoa. reason we have don't, the extra base runners not, because of softball. No. Come on. No, do not blame the players. This is on one person who's supposed to build character and sportsmanship. The president of the school, and I'm not joking around, the president of the school needs to talk to that coach. That's outrageous behavior. Despicable. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised there wasn't uh, a brawl here. Fisticuffs, 30 seconds. Clinton Yates, take the face time. <laughs> Speaking of softball, they brought us the glorious rule that is the extra runner, if you want to call it that, in extra innings that Memo B has decided to adopt for good now. Let me explain something. I love this. You people call it ghost runner. There's no ghost. There's no mystery. There's a real actual person that makes the game more exciting. Bring it on, kiddos. I like it. But you don't like the name Everyone ghost runner? Likes. I love it. Ooh. <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo and this.